Fangio was under pressure at the start of the British Grand Prix in 1950, the first race for the new Formula One Drivers World Championship. It was Fangio's first full season in Europe with Alfa Romeo, and his 158 takes an early lead. That summer, Fangio would be first at Monaco, Reims and Spa, and favourite to win the new world title in its first year. But here at Silverstone, Fangio retired with a broken oil pump, and later on at Monza, more engine trouble would rob him of the new title and give it to Farina. Though not for long, in the grandstands, the crowds knew that a great new talent had arrived. His greatness was in his talent. I mean, here was a man who could take a wheelbarrow and, and make it fly, you know, like, you know, like a Concorde. And it was, it was just, I think his, he had the opportunity of getting his adrenaline up far faster than other people. I mean, all of us are able to give certain extraordinary performance in certain times because of certain reasons, whatever it may be, not necessarily in racing. I think people can achieve great strength or whatever, far beyond their normal capabilities. Well, I think Fangio had the capability of, of being able to draw on this enormous reserve of talent more readily than maybe others of us. I, I don't know. If, I, if I'd known what made him so great, I'd have copied it. I mean, it's all one can say. Fangio was, was on his own. He was um, a just a tremendous driver. But having said that, I think that the, the really fast drivers, it, it, Fangio was unique. I think there are very... I can't think of anybody who was as competitive as he was and was as nice a guy. I mean, most of us are bastards, those that go quickly. They have to be. That's part of the deal. Well, Fangio somehow managed to make the equation without putting that little bit in. So, so maybe that's something to do with it. 1951, the French Grand Prix at Reims. Fangio's fellow countryman, Gonzalez, makes his debut for Ferrari. Villaresi was also driving one of the new four-and-a-half-litre Ferraris. Ascari, Fangio's chief rival on this fastest of European circuits. World champion Farina, sharing the front row of the grid in another Alpha 159. Fangio's Alfetta led at the start, but he had a fight on his hands. The latest 12-cylinder Ferraris were just as quick as he was, and much lighter because they use less fuel. Fangio narrowly avoided disaster when Rosier's Talbot blocked the road. Somehow, though, he managed to make up all the time he lost in fuel stops and won a spectacular victory in the Champagne country of France. But after five years and 27 Grand Prix victories, Alfa Romeo's run of success was coming to an end at last. <laughs> 